you have thin, fine hair, you must avoid these five mistakes. Now I've been doing hair professionally since 1995 and I've owned my own salon since 2000. And over those decades of dealing with tens of thousands of clients, I've learned that these things are some of the largest obstacles standing in your way of making your hair look thicker and fuller. So let's talk about them. Number one is to never ignore the difference between thin hair and fine hair. I cannot tell you how many times I've had a client sit in my chair and say that they struggle with their thin hair. Then when I look at them, I'm thinking, oh, oh, wait, 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 what, what? No, no, no. This is a very thick head of hair. It's just that every individual hair is fine in texture. You can have fine hair that's thin and you can also have thin hair that's not fine. And in some cases, the way you create volume, or I should say the look of density will be different depending on which of those you have. So understanding the difference is hugely important. So here's how I want you to think about it from now on. Think of your hair as a powder. Imagine you have eight ounces of liquid and you start adding that powder to it. The more powder you add, the thicker the liquid gets, the less thinner the liquid is. The more hair you have on your head, the thicker it is. Now, when we talk about hair being fine, we'd be referring to the actual size of each grain of that powder. Even if each grain is super fine, if you add enough, you'll still end up with a thick liquid. Or if you have larger, coarser grains and only add a few, the liquid will still be thin and less dense. So thin hair refers to the amount of hairs on your head, while fine refers to the texture of the individual hair. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Number two is to never assume the cause of the thinning. Imagine you had a car and it's driving funny. You had some friends tell you that their cars drove funny, so they had different parts of their engines fixed and the problems were solved. So you go and spend thousands of dollars on getting your engine examined and worked on. And when you pick the car up from the mechanic and you drive it home, you find out that it still has the exact same problem. And see, not knowing what's causing your hair to look or be thin is just as problematic as not knowing that your car just had a flat tire. Depending on why your hair is thin can completely alter the way you approach making it be or appear more dense. If your hair is starting to thin over the past few years, I'd recommend taking up with a dermatologist or a doctor and figuring out what is the root cause. It may be somewhat reversible, or maybe you wanna try a hair piece or even a transplant, or maybe it's as simple as changing one of the daily habits I'm gonna share later in this video. But until you know where it stems from, you won't know if you're wasting your time and money fixing a car that just had a flat tire. Okay, now take a look at these two photos and tell me which hairstyle looks thicker. I mean, like literally comment below A or B. All right, now if you said B, you're correct. So what's the actual difference? The only difference is the next thing you should never do. That is number three, which is overlook the power of low lights or highlights. At the end of the day, if your hair is all one color, it won't look as dense as if there are multiple colors. So you should never overlook the power of dimension in color. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know there's probably two things that are going through your head right now. And one of them is that I don't want to do color because it adds a ton of maintenance. And that makes sense. I understand where you're coming from and you wouldn't be wrong. However, highlights or low lights even on white hair, can be done in a way that they add dimension, but they really don't show any sort of grow out, or at least not grow out like most people associate with color. The maintenance can be literally as low as once every five or six months, or you could even just do it once and never do it again. And it would just eventually look like it kind of faded out and there just wasn't any color there anymore, but it would never look like an actual grow out line. The key is to understand that there is an option and it may be a small thing that makes a huge impact for you. Now, the other thing you may be thinking is that, well, all hairstylists just want you to do color so they can make more money. <laughs> I've heard that so many times in comments. I can understand where it comes from, but I can assure you that's not the case here. You are not not my client. There is no money I stand to make off of you. My goal with this is purely to show you that there is another option that may add more density or the appearance of more density, and you should definitely know about it. When it comes to thin, fine hair, it is very important that everything we do helps to enhance the fullness and appearance of density. This is why these next two concerns on the list are so important. The good thing is they're pretty super easy to fix. Number four, never play with your hair too much. <laughs> okay, after you styled your hair, what typically happens? It lasts for a little while, then it falls, starts to look flat, and ends up even looking thinner throughout the day. So what if I told you touching it could be a huge part of that problem? See, one of the reasons your hair could be falling flat is due to dirt or oil. One place we have a fair amount of oils, dirt, is, is our hands. So every time you use your hand to push your hair back, 
tuck it behind your ears, flip it, etc. You're adding oils from your hands to your hair. Now, if you want to help your hair stay as clean as possible for as long as possible, ultimately allowing it to look as full and as thick for as long as possible, you need to keep your hands out of it. And if I had a dollar for every time my mom told me to go wash my hands growing up. <laughs> now, I was a clean kid. I would have had a dollar or something. Number five, look, when you've got thin or fine hair, you know it's important to take good care of its health. At the end of the day, thin, fine hair can have a tendency to be a little bit more fragile than other textures. And due to the lack of density, you can't afford to lose any more hair than your natural shed. But if you're using conditioners, this includes leave-ins, never apply it to the roots. You need every advantage at getting the volume when you're styling it. And that means if a product isn't helping you create that volume and or thickness, it's potentially taking some of that away. It does not mean <laughs> you shouldn't use conditioner. It simply means that you need to keep it on the mid shaft to the ends where your hair needs it. You may have short hair and think, well, how do I do that? It doesn't make any sense. One way that you can try is to simply tilt your head over in the shower and just work that conditioner through those tips and ends and then rinse it out with your head tilted down so that you're not getting it onto your scalp as much. And this kind of goes for any length between pixie and say like a bob length. All of those will work. It actually works the same for longer hair. It's just a little bit more important for shorter hair. But the point is, if you still use conditioner and you don't apply it to the roots, the roots aren't gonna have a tendency to be as heavy. And then when you go and apply your volumizing mousse or gel or whatever you're using to create volume, it's not going to be impacted by the heaviness that the conditioner is adding to create that root volume. So. Put it where it belongs and you'll be fine. <laughs> okay, I wanna thank you for hanging out. Those are five things that you should never do when you've got thin, fine hair. But if you wanna learn more about thin, fine hair, then uh, why don't you go ahead and check out that video right there because uh, you'll like it. And I'll see you over there. <laughs> Have a good one, bye. <laughs> well, I'm the wrong way, I gotta go this way, huh? Cause I said over there.